How do you give everything you have and more? I had nothing left to give and you fail. Have you ever given you literally your life to some? I gave my life, guys, to fail. <laughs> Revolution gang if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution also make sure that you turn on your post notifications why for the good times for the vibes say with me now for the babies so guys I just want to start off by saying I'm sorry I, I, I'm sorry okay I dropped the ball I apart from last week um, I posted a video last week if you haven't seen it go check it out I haven't posted in about six months, half a year, and I think even before then I was inconsistent with my posting, which is way different from my posting uh, minimum once a week every Wednesday. I had even progressed to posting vlogs on Monday and um, content videos on Wednesdays, Then I had even introduced uh, um, a Christian segment on Sundays, like I, I had content, okay, and I was posting it. Um, and then I disappeared on you, okay? And then I also deactivated Instagram out of nowhere. So, so you like suddenly I'm gone on YouTube, I'm gone on Instagram. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm always posting my stories, I'm always interacting with you guys, we're always talking, we're sharing. Um, so if you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me on Instagram because we engage so much on Instagram. Like I'm just always sharing on Instagram and we're always talking. So go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Also, follow me on TikTok because I promise, I promise I'm going to post. I'm going to start posting on TikTok. I have the content. I just need to push it out. But anyway, the whole point of this video today is a life update. Where the heck has Benita been? Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. You're in my business. Oh, there's so much to tell you guys, hey? Yo, there's so much to tell you guys. So, wow, there's so much to tell you guys. Let me let me just get into it, okay? So, um, you guys know that last year, May 2022, I graduated with my Bachelor of Arts in Accounting um, with a minor in Management, summa cum laude for the babies. <laughs> Straight A's from the beginning to the end for the babies. Eh. Graduation speaker for the babies. <laughs> What else? Uh, flag bearer for the babies. Yo, just everything for the babies. Anyway, um, so that was last year. So after I finished my undergraduate degree, I then wanted to get my MBA. So I was already doing a program called 4 plus 1 at school, which is while I was completing my undergraduate studies, I was also simultaneously doing postgraduate studies. So I was actually, in, in 2021, I was actually doing both undergraduate work and master's students work at the same time. I would be a undergraduate student in the daytime and then at nighttime I would be a master's student at the same time. And so because I did that, it means that after graduating my undergrad, I only had one more year of my MBA postgrad for me to graduate. So that's why it's called four plus one because you have your four undergraduate years plus one year and that's, you get your master's degree. So instead of getting mine in two years, I got it in one year. So before I graduated, I was looking for internships. I already knew that after graduating, at the minimum, I'm gonna be a full-time graduate student. So unlike my peers who were then like, oh, I need to find a job, what am I gonna do, what's next? I knew what was next and I knew way ahead of time. Um, the only thing is I wanted to get an internship obviously for more experience. So in my last semester of school, undergraduate, I had an internship as a tax preparer, so I was doing people's tax. And then I then applied for an internship that I could do over the summer. Um, and obviously an internship that could potentially turn into a job. And the thing that's hard about being an international student is that when you are looking for internships, you need to specifically look for companies that are willing to work with international students because they need to sponsor your visa or do certain paperwork for you that they don't have to do for someone who's local to America. That makes things 10 times harder for you because 
even though you may graduate top of your class or you're just as good as your peers you your opportunities are cut in half maybe more than half by virtue of the fact that only certain firms are willing to work with you so i applied for an internship with this um other company and the interview went great i had to go shopping to find something to wear because i didn't have anything the interview went great and i saw the other people who were applying like at my school and like with all due respect i was the best candidate there um but nevertheless i didn't get the internship and i was so hurt by that i was i was i was distraught guys because i prayed about it i hoped for it i i spoke it you know i prepped everything and also and also my grades from the moment i started my schooling to the very end i only got a's nothing below below an A. So my grades were good. I had prior experience. I, you know what I mean? So I was crushed because obviously rejection hurts, but it wasn't just about rejection. It was also about the fact that now I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Because my options are limited. And this is one of the companies that really had what I was looking for. Another company, I spoke to someone who works there via networking and she was like, you're so great. Oh my gosh, we need you. Just, she connected me with the hiring people and my process ended when I said I'm South African because they were like, yeah, no, we don't work with international students. And it was a big firm as well, you know? So, um, when that happened, when I didn't get it, I was really crushed because now I'm like, God, what am I going to do? You know, um, my spirit was low, but you know, I was like, you know what, God, at the end of the day, so two things. I was like, at the end of the day, I know that at a minimum for the next year, I know what I'm doing. So I don't quite need to worry about a job yet. And then on the other side, I was like, you know what, God, you are going to do what you're going to do. I don't know what you want to do, but you're going to do it. And I trust you. God, you're going to bless me. And how you're going to do it is not my business. I just know you're going to bless me. You said you make a way where there's no way. Therefore, it's not my business to figure out where the way is. You will make that way where there's no way. One thing I have realized, that if God don't do it, it just won't get done. It's gonna take a miracle from God. Well, just before I graduated, I received a message on, um, is it an app? Uh, software I don't know um, called handshake and that's where students um, that go to universities have a profile handshake sort of like LinkedIn but for students and I believe alumni get to also maintain a handshake profile I got a message on handshake and it was from one of the big four firms in the world so you know in accounting there's f the big four it's uh, PwC KPMG EY and uh, Deloitte so those are big four firms. I had gotten a message from one big four firm asking me to apply and then another one asking me to apply in a space of time. So I applied for the first one and they just weren't getting back to me, like nothing. Then I got an invitation from another one to apply. Um, so I went ahead, I applied, I had the interviews, it was two interviews, 30 minutes each um, on the same day and it was a really good interview but you know I had been disappointed before and you know when it comes to these firms you're just like oh my gosh like do you know what you're competing with? You're competing with the best of the best in the world so I was like ah. Hey. He's not make sure. He's just too, he's not make sure. But um, as God would have it, the Almighty God from whom all my blessings come from, I got the internships. So here I am, um, just before I graduate, in the middle of me finding out I'm getting all these awards and honors, I also find out that now I've got an internship at one of the big four firms in the world. And this internship um, was going to happen in the summer, in SA, it's winter of 2022. 2022 after I graduate so okay cool I get that internship glory be to God I got myself an Airbnb where I was going to stay for two and a half months where I was doing the internship so I vlogged a day in my life doing my internship so now that I'm back on YouTube and I am back I'm gonna be posting those vlogs of me as an intern so some of the videos you're going to get from me guys are going to be backlog so comment down below if you want me to post those videos or if you feel like i should just move on like comment down below let me know um at the end of the internship i spoke to my mentor and to get feedback basically it was like a performance appraisal and he was like all of your teams loved you every single team you were on they had nothing but good things to say about you you were the go oh yes the gold standard i was the gold standard guys that is the review that i got from my teams 
the gold standard is like creme de la creme, like top of the top. Like it don't get better than the gold standard, baby. Daddy, daddy, watch me tomorrow. Daddy. What? And that being said, they're offering me a full-time job. So that's the first set of news I guess I want to share with you guys is I got offered a full-time job with one of the biggest firms in the world and um, they offered me a full-time job in America. So I am going to be moving to Houston in Texas to start this full-time job. So that means that after I graduate, so mind you, I got this offer um, August of 2022 and the offer, they let you choose when you want your start date to be and I had picked the next year because I remember I still had one more year of masters to do. So um, I got a full time job and they said you're going to start 2023. Guys, I went from God, what am I going to do? I went from God, if this company doesn't take me, who will? To now having a job with one of the biggest firms in the world, global company. They hire the best of the best, the top of the top. Like, do you understand the competition to get in? It's one of those things where when I was doing the internship, when people were introducing themselves, it was all, oh, I have a master's. Oh, I have this. Oh, I'm this, I'm this, I'm that. The pressure is getting worse. You go from being special where you come from, like at my school, I was special because of how, you know, I excelled in leadership, I excelled in academics, I excelled socially, I excelled politically, like in all, I was a well-rounded human at school and you go from being a whoa there to like, oh, you just fit in here because everyone is the gold standard or, or, or everyone is excellent or whatever. Um, so I went from, what am I going to do to boom now i've got a full-time job in america houston texas at one of the biggest firms in the world when i lost that small opportunity and i was crushed i never knew that god was saying no because what i have for you is bigger and god says i know the plans that i have for you plans to give you a future and a hope God says, in the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. God says, I have the power to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that you can think of and imagine. And that is exactly what he did for me. So now, let me give you context about how exactly I managed to do my MBA, okay? In the summer while I was doing my internship um, at one of the big four firms, I had applied for a job. In fact, before I even graduated, I was already lobbying. I was already speaking out to the department heads and I was like, hey guys, I'm gonna be a grad student. Please, if you're looking for a graduate assistant, I would love to have the job. So I was already like speaking, speaking, speaking and I had a very good relationship with many people in the department as well. And because I was a high achiever, like my, they knew my name and everything. Um, so anyway, while I'm in the middle of doing my internship, I applied for a job at my university um, for the position of a graduate assistant. So in this position, you don't get paid any money, but instead they pay for your tuition. So if I get this job, I won't get paid anything, but they will cover my full tuition, okay? And that is over like $20,000. Now mind you, when it comes to graduate schools, there's no scholarships for graduate students, period. Whether you're American or not, there's no scholarships for graduate students. I believe you can get um, student loans, NAS first, but student loans in America. But that was obviously only an option for citizens. But for, in overall, there's no scholarships for grad students. And for citizens, you can get a loan. As a non-citizen, you can't. So I had applied for a job as a graduate student. And I also spoke to the president of my school. One of my other friends that had done his um, master's at my school, he said, oh, the president, he spoke to the president. And the president is the one that helped organize um, money for him to study like a scholarship or whatever I don't know or funding I don't know so I set up a meeting with the president of my school and I was like hey um, I sent him a copy of my results obviously he knows the works I've done on campus like the Black Lives Matter March it, I started it and it's still going on to this day there's so much that I've done for the campus like my name was known um, 
so I set up a meeting with him and I was like, hey, um, listen, I'm going to graduate school. It's hella expensive. Is it possible for you to help arrange any kind of funding? And so we had that meeting and he said no. In fact, you know, the way he spoke was, uh, it was actually quite rude. It was quite offensive. Like he was like, you're an accounting student. Where do you think I must get that money from? That's kind of like how he spoke. He was like, where must I get that money from? Where do you think it comes from? Um, and, and even if he was going to say no, I think there was a nicer way for him to just say, oh, unfortunately, the funding is not available. I'm not able to organize. But the way he said it, there was almost a little bit of ridicule in it. Um, what's that word when someone like is condescending? It was almost a bit condescending. It was rude, man. You know, um, but anyway, cool. Had that meeting. He said no. All right. So that's out. And there's no scholarship so i applied for this job as well so while i was applying for this job i was also setting up a meeting so that just in case i don't get the job maybe this meeting will do something ah this meeting did nothing there's no funding options so i'm like this i need this job so i applied for this job i had the interview and by the grace of the most high god i got the job so now i got this job as a graduate student and they're going to pay for my tuition all right period great now i need a place to stay i also applied for a job as a graduate ra resident advisor so i don't know if you guys recall but i was an ra all my from the moment you can start which is second year up to the end i was an ra and in my last year i was a senior ra so i was a supervisor of ra so i applied for the job as a graduate as a, a gra um, graduate ra and it was quite competitive hey both these positions were quite competitive so the graduate ra one i think they were about five or six applicants i may be wrong but five or six applicants and there's one position one position um and there was there were people who also graduated summa cum laude who were going for the position people who were also RAs in their whole time there going for the position by the grace of the most high god again god did it again i got the job god did it they never believe on us yes. but god did it so now i've got these two jobs right one of them pays for my a tuition all my school fees and the other one pays for my accommodation now they pay me they paid me like fifty dollars a month i think um so they paid me the graduate already paid me fifty dollars a month but the main thing they offered was they cover my accommodation in exchange for me working for them and that's actually how i funded my graduate studies guys so i work these two jobs one as a graduate assistant and so to explain a bit about a graduate assistant i was the assistant of the business uh, what was the department became a school i was the graduate assistant so there were three things i was doing mainly i was working with one individual and um this person and i were doing surveys to past students so i was making surveys literally i was researching them i was making them putting them together editing them administering them and then analyzing them writing a report that's what i was doing multiple surveys then on the other side we were editing a website so like i i did website review i had to look at all these things one by one minor details there was confusion in the school itself like the information they would give me would be wrong when you ask for clarification they also don't know there was a lot of confusion so it's hard for me to do my job when they my supervisors don't know but they were graceful don't get me wrong just that in the midst of chaos it's it's hard to find order you know so um we were work i was working on i was building the website editing it um looking through things uh, reaching out to other people having a bunch of meetings um so that was my other responsibility then i was also responsible for meeting minutes so i would go to the department or school meetings the school of business and economics and i would take the meeting minutes and then i would have to write them down um make a report send it out make any edits if necessary so that's what i was doing for my job as a graduate assistant then my job as a graduate ra i would have rounds every week and that's from 8 p.m until midnight on wednesdays every single week then every other weekend i would have work from half past 10 p.m on friday until half past two in the morning and and so what happens is you're on duty that in that whole um, time period. So once every hour, you have to walk around the whole building, let people in if they're locked out, report anything that's um, 
suspicious help anyone who needs help if people are drinking you handle it you uh, you're like a, li a liaison with the police and you write a report about it so you write a report all about everything that happened i was doing room inspections i was in charge of two floors all the other ra's had one floor in my building i had two floors and mine was a mixture of both um, undergraduate students postgraduate students um, students who are older for their you know age like if you're a freshman but you're older than freshman year um, or age so I had two floors and then I had to do floor events and then people come and talk to me if they need help I do room inspections I do lockouts so it was a lot of work now those are the two jobs I'm doing just for me to get by to be able to afford my studies right now in addition to those two jobs I was also a full-time student by the way a full-time MBA student where I was taking four courses um, yeah four courses a semester yeah it was two every week three hours long um and there were night classes and mind you some of them would literally be from like six uh six or five six seven eight some of them would be from five up until eight so like for instance on a wednesday right um i would have work as a graduate assistant from morning like throughout the day i'd be doing that and then um i would have class from five up until eight then i have work from eight up until midnight right and i'm not even done that's not everything i was doing i've not yet told you everything there's more i was doing so that's like what my schedule would look like on a Wednesday. I was a full-time student and you know with graduate students, like they give you a lot of work, a lot of assignments and long assignments and group assignments. So in between having classes, um, in the weekdays, I would also be having to meet with my group members for separate group work. Then there's homework, then there's exams. So it was a lot of work and I was doing that full-time. Then I had those two jobs and I'm not done yet. I started my journey of studying for my uh, CPA exams, uniform CPA exams. These are uniform um, certified public accountant exams. And it's basically the American version of CASA, Chartered Accountant SA, but the American version. And how that works is you have four exams that you need to take and each of them, they're four hours each and they cost about, I'll, I'll put the costing here somewhere on the, on the, and how that goes is you can choose the order in which you take these exams, but the moment you you pass your first exam you have 18 months to pass all the other ones otherwise the first one you wrote and passed will begin to expire and it's four topics it's auditing it's regulation which is your tax and stuff your taxes and your laws it's um, FAR, which is financial accounting and reporting that's your real debit credit like that's your real accounting and then it's BEC BEC is business and economics yo that one was business it was economics it was finance all in one so those are the four exams you need to write and um, you can choose the order you write them in if you fail an exam you need to pay that amount again to rewrite if you change your exam date like let's say you picked a date and you need to change it you then need to pay to make that change it can be as low as $35 and as high as um, 80 bucks or even higher so now that I've told you that I'm doing these exams let me give you the full scope of what exactly I was doing I was working two jobs. I was a full-time student and I was studying full-time for these exams. Now for a little bit more context, some people, right, that they study for the exam full-time. These exams I'm talking about, the four CPA exams, they study for it full-time. Like that's their full-time job is to study for these exams. It is the biggest books you will ever see. A lot of content. Like you realize that what you learned in school was nothing. In fact, some of the things I was learning about, I never even learned in school. The amount of detail, the amount of the formulas you need to know, the math, the concepts, the, the, yo, there's so much you need to learn guys. So yeah, some people do this full time and it can take you minimum. It's taking you a month to study for these exams. If you're really going to study minimum it's a month and that's even if you're doing it full-time now mind you i'm doing it while i'm a full-time student working two jobs and now i'm studying for this so when guys when i tell you i was working monday to sunday every i'm not kidding guys i let me i promise i'm not lying monday to sunday 
every in fact monday to monday every week i'm working there was no such thing as a weekend there was no such thing as a rest day i never took a day where i just said oh today i'm doing nothing the only time i would take a break to watch tv is when i'm eating otherwise i'm not watching tv so you can imagine so in a day right remember i had given you a preliminary schedule in the morning into the afternoon i'm doing my work for my job it was half remote so it was hybrid half remote half in person so in the morning into the afternoon i'm doing work for my job if i finish for my graduate assistant job right if i finished it early i would study right so like let's say i did my work from 9 a.m and then i finished it early and i finished at 12 then from 12 up until about half past four um i'm studying for my cpa exams then from half past four i take a break to eat until five at five i start my my class for my master's degree at five i start my night class it's three hours long five six seven eight i finish at eight at eight i start my graduate ra job and i have that from eight up until 12. and in the middle of me doing my graduate ra job i'm also still studying in in between those hours of me working i'm also at the same time same time studying for my cpa exam then i finish at 12. from 12 up until about 2 a.m then i'm studying for my cpa then from 2 um, until half past 2 i went to the gym just to like get a little bit of exercise shower go to sleep wake up at 9 a.m and repeat it like that was my schedule um and obviously it, it will differ based on the day but roughly that's how much i was working if i didn't have a class because you know i had classes twice a week so on days when i don't have a class i would do my graduate ra work i mean my graduate assistant work then i would study all day then i take a break to do either I'm meeting up with my group mates for my studies or i take a break to do homework a homework assignment research for my mba program and then there's always RA work to do. I'm hosting an event. So guys, literally Monday to Monday, every single day, I'm working. And then Saturdays and and Saturdays and and um, Sundays would be the days where I dedicate all my time to studying so like you would find that on friday i tried to do my homework so remember sometimes i had work from half past 10 to half past two i'll use that time to do my homework and then saturday and sunday i give that time fully just to studying like all day all all have you ever studied all day have you ever studied all day every day have you ever studied every single day monday to monday guys you will lose your mind it is the most you guys Yo, even just thinking about it, studying, I started last year, August, and I was studying with software, right? So it, I studied with software, they send you a book, and you have to watch lecture videos, then you do multiple choice questions, then you do case study questions, and oh, it was a lot. Um, and the software that I had, it cost about $3,000. Um, to get like the best version, but the company that I'm that I, I, I signed a contract for um, They paid for it. So they paid for my material That's how I was able to afford it and then but the exams I pay for it myself It was one of the hardest things I've ever done and the worst thing about it is that it makes you feel so stupid Because it's hard guys. You're learning new content every day. You keep learning and so every day you're learning right and before you you don't have time to grasp this content fully before you move on because you have a timeline like you have to set a date for when you're going to write your exam you have to plan you have to oh you have to have a plan and it's like every single day because of everything i'm doing i was falling short i wasn't meeting my schedule it's like i was working as hard as possible guys i worked hard I worked so hard I was working as hard as possible and it wasn't enough I gave my best and it wasn't enough there wasn't a day where I was not failing to meet my study schedule there wasn't a day where I felt like I wasn't enough because every day do you know what it's like to have a failure every single day because every day that you don't meet your schedule is a day that you feel like a failure every day I felt like a failure a failure just for not beating a schedule now to add on top of that I'm learning content that is so difficult that it makes me feel stupid it makes me feel incapable it makes me feel like is this the same brain that got A's now mind you I'm still the same person who needs to show up and do my jobs support other people 
and be a full-time student. And it was so hard because I'm there as an RA to support my residents and I needed support. Do you know what it's like to pour into the cups of others when you're empty? Guys, I felt, I, I, all I did was study. I had no social life, I deleted Instagram, I didn't post on YouTube. I, when I tell you I had no social life, I didn't hang out with friends. Mind you, this is my last year being in uni, my last year being in that area before I move away. My last year being with my friends. I didn't go out, I didn't have a social life, and I, it was so mentally and emotionally draining. I didn't have the energy to be there for anyone else. I didn't have energy for phone calls. I didn't have energy for fights. I didn't have energy for stress. I was a bad community member. I've always been a bad texter, but I will always check on my people. I wasn't checking on my people. I wasn't replying. I, I was fighting for my life. I, I'm not a crybaby. I don't cry a lot. Actually, when I, as I'm getting older, I, I do be crying a little bit. Bruh. But in the general sense, I'm not a crybaby. Guys, I was calling my parents and crying. And me in particular, I don't call my parents to cry because I don't want them to see me cry because I'm in America, right? When I cry, they, they you know, their parents, they love me. They're going to feel helpless and sad. And I don't want them, that for them. I have to be strong so they can be strong, you know? But this one, I would call them and I'd break down. The number of times I called my parents and I was just crying. And they would tell me, Sissy, rest. And I'm like, no, I didn't meet my study schedule. I didn't do enough. I'm, I, I'm not good enough. And no one could convince me otherwise. Nobody. You know? Because they're all saying you've worked hard. And I'm like, you're telling me I worked hard. I'm not meeting a study schedule here. You know? You're telling me that I have to rest. But do you understand that for every moment of rest, I have to make up for it somewhere else? You have to pay for everything. That rest I'm taking, I know I have to pay for it somewhere. I know I have to make up for it somewhere. And the hardest part is I didn't know anyone else at the time who was taking the exam. So I didn't have anyone to lean on who understood where I was coming from or what I was going through. I was alone. I was isolated. I was physically isolated unless I'm working. I was emotionally isolated. I was mentally isolated. I tell you, by the grace of God, guys, I... From the moment I started my MBA program to the end, I never got anything less than an A. For every single course that I did, I got A's. And there's not, I'll, if I pull up my transcript, there's not one B. Nothing short of an A. And I did that while I had two other jobs and studying full time for a mentally decapitating exam. I thank God. And hard work guys no I worked I know that I've been fighting for my life everything got messed up my health got messed up my eating habits my sleeping habits I started when I'm stressed I twitch bro I started twitching my hand twitch my eye twitch my tummy twitch my thigh twitch my body would aggressively twitch because of how stressed I was and I had to keep going and mind you let's not forget there are things like periods that come in the middle of period pain i'm just crying and sitting at the table studying guys and i learned to respect the power of periods because it really does slow you down but that's a video for another day after pushing back pushing back pushing back i wrote my first exam which is auditing and i passed yo i was so nervous man yo and the results come out on a set day so if you write in the like the results come out after a certain period so they'll say if you write by august 5th maximum the results come out by like September 5th or whatever. So even after you write, there's a long time that you have to wait for your results. But I wrote the exam and by the grace of God, I passed. I got 78. Now mind you, the pass mark for these exams is 75. So I passed, I got 78, that's my first exam. But by the time I wrote my first exam, I had pushed back so much that I didn't have time to write my second exam anymore because I was gonna go home to essay because school was closing. Um, but yeah guys, now in the middle of also writing these exams, now I know that okay, I've got a full-time job. Therefore, I need to now start putting the pieces together for me to build my life in America. So I went to the bank to try and get credits. I had no credits at all. So I went to the bank to try and get credits so I can have a credit score. And the lady at the bank was like, bruh, like it's not looking good. You have no debt, you're foreign, like it's just not looking good for you. Um, but I applied anyway 
and I like I just put my faith in God, you know, and I applied. I had prayed before and everything, um, and I put my trust in God. And by the by the grace of God, they approved my credit same day, same time. And what was interesting is they gave me like there's a I think she said normally the credit they'll give you is anything from 1,500 to 2k. Uh, for a first time for a case like mine if they even give you she was even like I don't think it's possible She was like you may need someone to attach you to their credit and that's how you'll build your credit But mind you, I don't know anyone in America who was going to who will who will put you on their credit and there was a friend of mine who He's he was also he's also an international student and he had people do that for him You know and it's like I wasn't jealous. I was happy for him, but I was like wow like I'm really alone I'm really alone when it comes down to it who will who will you know but God will that's who so they approved my credits and I think they gave me a credit of 4k which for starting credits and with my profile she was like bro that is like unheard of so okay cool I opened my credit card I put my monthly phone bill on my credit card so that's what's on my credit card every month that's how I'm building it then I'll use it as well for like grocery shopping but I never spent money I didn't have so I always made sure I paid it back on time and early so and I'm only doing that to build my credits then I'm like okay cool I need to get my license now because I never had a license I never had a car my whole time in America so I applied for my learners test I downloaded an app I just did the questions over and over and over and over and over and over and over I went I wrote my learners test passed it um, so I passed my learners test. So now I'm on the road. I'm building my credits. I passed my learners. Now, mind you, remember I got this job offer, right? Um, and I and I accepted and everything. But when I started my internship, guys, it was only then that I was learning about the different routes you can take in accounting because I didn't really know. Um, and Google, you know, Google is it's there, but it's a little confusing. And in school they don't tell you but when i got to the company i found out about a segment and i was like that's where i want to be i don't want to be an auditor i don't want to do audits i don't want that to be my that was my offer to be an auditor um and this this department that i wanted to be in they never hire um first years basically to join their department normally you have to work first and then you they can recruit you to join their department but for the first time ever they were holding interviews to invite people to uh, join the team as a first year it's their first time and what was crazy about that is when i first got to that company i said god that's where i want to be and i don't know how i'm going to get there but because it's it's interesting because once you get an internship you kind of you're forced into your place you get an internship for this thing everything leads you there you stay there you know what i mean it's hard to diversify so or, or diverse or whatever so i was like god i want to be there but i don't know how how all of a sudden now they're holding interviews first time ever they're doing this i'm like god you did this one for me god did it okay shut fede i applied i did the interview and of course guys who is my god like who is my god it's the alpha and the omega the way maker and the miracle worker the one who makes a way where there's no way the part of the oceans of the red seas guys i got the job guys i got the freaking job and it's so much cooler than my initial job like it uh, it's the department i wanted it's so much cooler i'm still gonna be doing audit work but like it's not audits, I'm not an auditor anymore. I do strategy and transactions, that's what I do. So like mergers, acquisitions, um, some audit work, but that's what I do basically. Um, and not only did I get this job, but it also paid like a lot more, a lot more, a lot more than what audit paid, a lot more. So now I got this job in like the department that I wanted and it's never been done before. And it pays way more, way more, like, way more, way more, like, way more. Oh, this God. Okay, so that's the update on my job, essentially. And I'm going to be starting that job 2023, this year. Now it's January of uh, 2023. Yo, I'm stressed. It's four exams. I wanted to get them done before I graduate. I graduate in May. I've only done one exam. There's three more, there's no time. And the reason why I wanted to get it done by May is because after I graduate, I have to move out. 
I don't have a place to stay anymore. Once I graduate, my visa expires. So, okay, Shab, then I, in January, I started doing a 40 day fast. So I started in January and it ended at the end of Feb, 40 days. Um, and it was so hard to study while fasting, man, because remember, I don't sleep much. I struggle to sleep. I work up until late and I'm not eating. So like my energy, where must it come from? And I'm stressed and I'm, yo, and then my period, I get extra hungry. Yo, it was so hard. But you know what? When I started doing this fast, I, I, I wrote down in my prayer book. I was like, I want to write each, each exam once and pass the first time. I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm connected to the Most High um, and I'm studying and I'm working and I'm doing all these things and then I go and I write my second exam. When I write my second exam, I get my results. I'm so scared. Oh no. I got 64 and I needed 75 to pass. I failed. I've never failed in my life. Never. Not academically. I've failed at things in life, yeah, that happens. Academically, never. For the since I started my undergraduate journey to that point, all I got was A's for my school subjects. When I was in high school, I got blaze blazers and academic scrolls and bronze, all these things. Either way, every, every year, for my whole life, academic career, awards evening, it was me. Never once was I left out. Now here I am failing. And I was devastated. Devastated because, yeah, failing sucks. And it was my first time failing academically. So I was like, yo, I, this is tough. But guys, I was devastated because from the bottom of my heart, I gave my life. I gave my life to those exams. I studied every day. I gave it everything I had. It, it was so all encompassing. It took everything of me. It took all that I had. How do you give everything you have and more? I had nothing left to give and you fail. Have you ever given you literally your life to some? I gave my life guys to fail. You start to think about all the invitations you rejected, the things you never did. And you're like, I should have, I should have. If I was gonna fail anyway, I should have. I was devastated because the idea of having to go through that big book again and all that content again that I'd already gone through all over again was so hurtful to say the least. Failing an exam, guys, the worst part is that you have to go through all that content all over again. And it messes with my timeline. Because now, instead of having only two left, I have three that I need to write. In what time? What was hard about it as well is I was fasting. You know, I was like, God. Which one is that one now? Spiritually, I gave everything. Physically, I gave everything. Mentally, I gave everything. Emotionally, I gave everything. I have nothing left to give. How am I supposed to do this when I have nothing left to give? I have nothing. How? I can't pray more. I felt I couldn't. Now what? And all the people who I invested in my journey and I have to keep telling them I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed. I got 64 by the way, out of 75. I needed 75, I got 64. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. The journey goes on. You know, um, I didn't study for about two days. And then I was back on the horse, but I didn't uh, study for the exam. I failed. I moved on to the next one. So now I'm still doing everything I'm doing. I'm studying for my exams. Fast forward, I graduated and um, upon graduation, it means multiple things. Number one, I'm done with my MBA. Number two, my visa expires. Number three, I no longer have a place to stay. <laughs> Number four, I'm done with my other jobs. And now all I need to do is study because um, I, I didn't finish the exams on time. So that's another goal I didn't meet. I didn't finish my exams by the time I wanted to. Um, and when I graduated, thank God, I'm gonna post the videos. I, top of my class, from the beginning to the end, all I got was A's. I got an award for being the top MBA student. Um, 
So that was great. My parents came for graduation. That was great. Um, I went with them to go apartment hunting. I think I vlogged it, so I'll, I'll post those vlogs. So I went apartment hunting and everything. Um, and then my parents go home. Now, I, I spoke to my school and I was like, hey guys, I need a place to stay. Can I stay till end of May? And they actually said yes. And the reason why this is a miracle is because, first of all, you know how schools are. When you graduate, you need to leave. <laughs> Don't gotta go home, but you can't stay here. And so the fact that they let, I graduated May 6th, they let me stay till end of May. That is un, like, unheard of. And not only that, for free. I didn't pay a single thing. That's unheard of. To stay for free, I get Wi-Fi, electricity, like literally everything for free. Didn't pay anything. They let me stay. That alone, I'm like, God, thank you. But also to them, thank you. And I'll make a video talking about the kindness of strangers. The kindness of people got me through so much in these last few years. But sure. Okay, so till end of May, I've got a place to stay. No, so I stayed till end of May and I didn't write my exam yet because there wasn't enough time. So I stayed till end of May. Then I had to get an Airbnb to stay at um, for the month of June. So remember, I had a place to stay till end of May. For the month of June, I got an Airbnb to stay at. I got the cheapest one that I could get. It was in a very bad neighborhood, a very dodgy neighborhood. I lived in a warehouse, a warehouse. Like it looked like a, it was like a decapitated building. It looked horrible. It, it was horrible. And um, the inside was nice, but remember, Airbnb doesn't give you the address until after the booking. So only after could I see from the outside, like, um. That's suspicious. That's weird. So I stayed in the Airbnb and um, for the whole month. It was a bad neighborhood. I literally stayed inside the whole time. The inside was nice, but it was infested by bugs, guys. Do you know how scared I am of bugs? I'm terrified of bugs when I was by myself. Yo, guys, you know those ones that have a million, billion, trillion legs and they fast? Yo! Ow! Oh! Ay, 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 ay! I was fighting for my life. <laughs> I felt like it was the end of my life. Every day with those stupid bugs. So, um, yeah, no, um, I was staying there. And while I was there, I wrote my third exam. Uh, and um, it was one of the hardest one it was far and then a week later I wrote I rewrote a week or a week and a half later I rewrote the one I failed so I got my results for those on the same day oh my god guys oh my lord I'm gonna cry <laughs> I can't breathe. I got 83 for B, C, and 85 for F. I passed three CPA exams and I have one more to go. Oh my Lord Jesus, this is something only God could do. Let's go! Yes, guys! So now the rewrite is done. I got 83, but also my other exam, I wrote it and I passed the first time on the first go, my boy, on the first go. And that's the hardest exam. For, oh, do you understand the hardest exam? And I wrote it and I passed it on the first go, 85, 83. And that means I have one more exam to go. Oh my Lord. So I stayed in the Airbnb for the month of June. And then um, in the first three weeks of July, I stayed with my friend and her family because I, yeah, no, I couldn't afford to get a whole um, Airbnb for like another, you know, thingy. I didn't want to stay in that area. So my friend and her family were so gracious. Thank you so much to Jackie and her family for like taking me in for three, for three weeks. And that was also really hard for me because as a person, nothing to do with the family. As a person, I do not like staying in people's houses. I feel like a burden. I don't know how to act. I, I feel uncomfortable eating. I, I, you know, you know, you have to be on edge all the time because you have to behave. You can't be, not that I misbehave, but you know what I mean? At people's houses, man, you have to hold yourself in a way that you don't have that freedom in your own home, you know? 
So I don't like being at people's houses. My mom never let me sleep over anywhere. Never, ever, ever, ever. So I'm not used to sleeping at people's houses. It feels weird. I, I'm not used to it. I don't like depending on people. I don't like feeling like a liability. I don't like feeling like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't like any of that. So it was so hard for me to be at a point where I needed to stay with someone because I literally had nowhere to go. But thank you again to my friend and her family for letting me in. I was so comfortable. There was no issue. Like, they were amazing, amazing to me. And again, I will make a video about the kindness of people, guys. Um, but yeah, so I stayed with my friend and I then had to write my final exam and I had to write it before I go home to essay, right? So I wrote the exam on July 22 at 8 a.m. It's four hours long. And literally I rode up until one. After one, I had to go straight to the airport because I had a 16 hour flight back to SA. Okay, cool. Now I will get back to the results of that exam in a bit. Now let's talk about, I graduated, right? My visa is expired, the student one. So there's this visa for international students. It's, it's called OPT. And OPT is op optional, practical training it lets you work in america for one year after graduating um all international students get it or all, all can apply <laughs> to get it an application costs about 400 and something dollars um and so while i was in school before i graduated i applied for this opt and when i applied for it your school agent ne, they need to vouch for you so like the day you apply they need to vouch for you on their side and say no nope, we're good with this one my school agent i i had let her know when i was applying in fact i was on the phone with her almost the whole time getting like is this right is this right when after i applied i called her i said i did it i sent an email she only approved it three days later on monday and so after a month of waiting, my letter comes in from the mail, your visa has been declined. I lost my mind because what am I going to do? I have to, re you're allowed to reapply. So now I have to reapply. It costs $400 to apply for one. And the reason that they declined it is because she, she approved it late. So I went to her, yo, guys, I saw red, man. When I was walking to her office, I was so dizzy. Yo, yo, like, yo, <laughs> I couldn't see anything. Um, went to her office and i was like listen this is what it says so i sat with her we reapplied she paid for the fee which i thought was very nice she paid for the fee i reapplied now remember when they when they declined my visa sorry i was gonna call when they declined my visa they declined it in a month this one i applied for it in april i only heard back in middle of june and uh, so I was stressed because I'm not hearing back from them. I heard back in the middle of June that I got <laughs> the visa. Activate. Activate. So positive news. Okay, cool. I got this one year visa. Fantastic. Because with this visa, it also means that I'm able to go home in July. Because until I get this visa, I can't go home in July, right? Because I can't come back in the country. I need the visa to be able to travel. I need this card. It was approved, I got the visa, now I'm like, yes, thank you God, I've got one more exam left, um, I got approved for the visa, I can go home, yes, things are looking up. But mind you, my employer on the back end, they put me in the H-1B lottery. So H-1B is a work visa and it's valid for three years, obviously, so three years is way better than one year. Um, so they put me in the lottery for the H-1B visa. And can I tell you, the odds of winning this is like zero. It's low, it's low because so many, my company puts all of their international students in the lottery, all that they're hiring. And that my company is one of the big four firms. There's three others that are likely doing the same thing. Then there's other firms that are doing the same thing. Then there's individual people who like, it's a huge lottery. And I believe it's also open to international applicants. So it's, it's a huge lottery guys. The chances of winning are low. So when I knew my company was doing that, in my prayer book, I, I put it in like, okay, God, let me win this visa. But honestly, I, even when I prayed, I didn't pray too much about it because I was like, yeah, I know this one uh, is probably not going to happen. And I'm just not, I'm not going to set my sights on it. I'll get this one year work visa, then I'll see from them. And in the middle of June, towards end of June, I get a letter from my company and they were like, we are pleased to inform you that um, you've been approved for this visa 
I won the H-1B visa. Hey, boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Yeah. Ugh. And then also, I, I managed to lock in an apartment. One of the ones that I was touring, I locked in one of the best apartments. Um, so now I got that apartment, I signed my lease. So now I have a better job, a better visa, the best apartment that I could have wanted. Um, I graduated top of my class, all A's. I passed the three exams. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I passed the fourth exam. I just found out that I, on the 8th of August, I found that I passed the fourth exam with 85. I'm officially done with all of my exams, all four of them. It's giving Benita Danielle MBA CPA. No, in fact, let me say it right. Let me say it correctly because I worked way too hard for me not to say it right. That's Benita Danielle BA in accounting with a minor in management, summa cum laude, MBA of my class CPA this is what dancing looks like in Lombardo Now, of course, I don't have my CPA license yet, but the hardest part is behind me. The hardest part literally is these four exams. You know, um, that's the hardest part. Once you get past that, it's just like some other stuff you need to do. But like once you pass the exams, like you're there. Guys, that's Benita Danielle, BA Accounting, Summa Cum Laude, MBA CPA. Listen, from now on, just call me MBA CPA. Like just, just, just call me MBA CPA because it ended in CPA. Doesn't sound as doesn't sound the same like it ended in C A S A, but it ended in C P A, guys. So, oh, I'm saying, talk to me so freaking nicely. Talk to me nicely. Have you met my God? Have you met him? Because I don't know if you've met my God. Have you heard the things that God let me fix this chair has been doing for me time and time and time and time and time? Keep your faith, man. Keep your faith and just don't give up. Like work. Work hard and don't give up and keep pushing and cry and push and go. I pushed, I worked. No one can say I worked, guys. But no amount of hard work can substitute the grace of God. That's my life update. Oh, and of course, I know you guys want to. I'm single. I, I, I don't have a man. I don't have a boyfriend. I'm single. I haven't been open to meeting anyone. I haven't been open to dating. I've been too work busy working. Um, I'm open now. No, now I'm open to it. So um, hit my line. J just ask me for my dad's email. Don't even hit me up. Honestly, just ask me for my dad's email and and just go talk to him because I'm not in the mood. But like, yeah, I'm now at a point where I'm looking for a f serious full time relationship. Full time. <laughs> A long-term full-time relationship I don't even know how to say it um, and I want I want a good man I want a godly man I want a kind man I want a hard-working man I work too hard to be with a lazy man I want an ambitious man I want a man who with aspirations who's currently working towards it I want a man with money my brother's behind me showing me money signs yes I want a man with money I don't want a rich man right now cuz I'm not expecting to meet someone and you're rich but I'm definitely expecting someone whose earning potential is like high um, educated <laughs> businessman or career man but like I've worked way too hard to be with someone who is just not gonna match my fly I'm so sorry you know so I'm single because I knew life updates yeah you guys wanted that but of course I'm not pregnant don't have a kid whatever that's whatever but that's my life update that's me um, this video is incredibly long so I'm gonna end it here um, and I just want to say thank you Jesus thank you God Please guys, don't give up on your dreams. I know it's hard. People see me and they see me shining and they see the awards and they see, you don't see the crying, you don't see the pain, you don't see the tears. Some of you do, because I post on Instagram. But where I am right now, understand it didn't just come today. Understand I wasn't born with it. Understand they didn't hand it to me. Understand it wasn't a silver platter. My parents didn't do this for me. Nobody but God did this for me. God, my hard work did this for me. I didn't buy this, I earned it. I worked for it. There's no replacement for hard work and the grace of God. So I just want to encourage you, 
Stand up and work, guys. And by the grace of God, you will benefit. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's hard. But I'm here. And I didn't die. And I won't die. I will live to proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'll live to make more and do more and be more. Because this is only the start. And I want to thank you for being with me. And I know you'll continue to rock with me because you're my gang. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll be back with more videos. Please comment down below with any questions you have. Please show lots of love. I really want to end this video. So thank you, guys. I love you. Good night.